This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to take a look at confidence intervals and margin of error. We will be using the TI Inspire to do this. So the sections within this video are going to be, number one, we're going to take a look at the definitions for confidence interval and margin of error. Section two, we're going to go over an example. In section three, we'll go over our second example. Let's get started. So let's take a look at the definitions for confidence interval and margin of error. Confidence interval says it is a range of values generated by a certain percentage that describes the likelihood of containing the mean of a sample. Okay, that is an extremely thick definition and of course the best way to understand it is to do some problems in context and we're going to see those shortly. Um, margin of error. So the margin of error is a percentage value that defines the confidence interval and the confidence interval is equal to twice the margin of error. Now it's kind of under easy to kind of understand these uh, ideas because they're kind of interwoven but um, anytime you do a survey you just have to know that your survey is never perfect because although your survey data may be accurate, but if you're trying to decide what the entire group is doing based on a very small amount of data, that's where the error comes in. And there's some mathematics to describe it, and that's where the confidence interval and margin of error step in. Okay, so anyway, that, it's kind of thick. Let's get to know these definitions in context. All right, so here's our first example. Uh, Problem one, a survey of 1,500 people had 30% of its respondents say they exercise an hour per week. Let's calculate a 90% confidence interval for this result. Okay, so when you're doing these problems, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, um, whatever your percentage is, and I'm not talking about the confidence interval percent, I'm saying whatever the percentage is that you've now found what you're going to do is ask yourself this question. You're going to say, what is 30% of 1,500? Okay, so, so when you do this, of course, you're going to say, hey, 30% is 0.30. And of, you know, usually means multiplication. We've got our 1,500. Okay, so we multiply these, and we say that the answer is 450. Okay, so now we say, hmm, this is basically the number of people who said that they exercise an hour per week. And when we go to our next screen, we refer to this as the number of successes. Okay, and you'll see what I mean when we use the calculator. Now, we have to also ask ourselves, how many people did we ask in the survey? And that's the total number, which is 1,500. And we are going to refer to that as our grand total, 1,500. Okay, so let's now jump to the calculator and plug in this information. All right, so what we do is we hit, and you can be this in calculator mode, so I'm just going to get a new document, go to calculator, and you could be pretty much in anything, list and spreadsheets too, and this will work. But you hit menu um, on your calculator. We then are going to grab uh, statistics, and we want to grab confidence interval, right? That's the whole point. We're going to calculate the confidence interval, and we want this one. Okay, now to do this, it's asking for us for a few things. It said, well, how many successes did we have? Well, if you go back, we had 450 successes. How many total people did we ask? 1,500. Well, we wanted a 90% confidence interval. This is set right now for 95, so we're gonna switch this. So now that it's a 90%, we're gonna hit okay. Now the calculator hits us with a lot of stuff. You'll notice here um, it says the p-value. Uh, the p-value there is the proportion, right? The proportion we knew already was 30%. 
uh, we knew n stood for the number of people we asked. Okay, now let's look closely at these uh, values right here. So these values right here uh, define the confidence interval. This is the lower part of the interval, here's the upper part. When I look at these decimal values, they're going to give rise to some percents. So okay, here I got 281 and 319. All right, so we're going to write those numbers. So if you remember, the numbers were 0.281 and 319. And that means this is 28.1% and this is 31.9%. So what does this mean? It means that if I were to conduct the same survey again with a random group of people, that the mean of my data would fall anywhere between 28.1% to 31.9%. So in other words, that 30% is probably really close to the answer with the 90% confidence. Okay, another thing you have to look at is if you go back to um, the calculator. The calculator gives us ME. ME is margin of error. You can see that that is a 1.9, right? 1.9%. So if you have a 1.9%, imagine taking 30% and adding 1.9. If you add 1.9, you're going to get 31.9 which is the top end of our uh, confidence interval. If you took 30% and you subtract 1.9, which is our margin of error, you're going to get the bottom half, or 28.1%. So you could see that the margin of error is related to the confidence interval because the distance between the low end and the high end is two margin of errors. Okay, it's kind of thick. So let's try another problem and I'll run through the uh, second problem a little faster. All right, so here's our second problem. A poll of 1,200 voters reported 25% of its respondents were independents. Calculate a 95% confidence interval for this poll. Okay, so again, you got to ask yourself this question. When you're given this percent and you're given the uh, number of respondents, um, we want to figure out what is 25% of 1,200. Okay, what is 25% of 1,200? So you throw this in the calculator. Well, what do you throw in the calculator? You put 0.25 and you multiply that by 1200 and we're going to get 300. Again, when we use the calculator, we call this the number of successes. Okay, so let's throw this into a calculator. Again, we were looking for a 95% confidence interval. All right, so what do you do? You hit menu, you go to statistics, and then you, of course, you want confidence interval. Now, which confidence interval? It's this one right here, the proportion. Um, and we're gonna use this one. Okay, now let's put in what we know. So we know the number of successes was 300. We know the number of uh, respondents, total number of people we asked, that is, is 1,200. And we wanted a 95% confidence interval, and there it is. So we could leave this number just the way it is. If we wanted 90, we put 90, but we want a 95. So now let's press OK. And the calculator gives us some numbers. Remember, see how we, we have the 1,200 people, our 25% uh, of successes. And if here, again, is our confidence interval. So here's 22.6 and 27.5. So I'm going to write that down. All right, so what's our interval? 
So those numbers we just saw, we had 0.2255 and our other number was 0.2745. Okay, now again, this just means 22.55%. I'm being accurate here, uh, a little extra accurate for a reason, as you'll see in a second. And this one, of course, is 27.45%. Okay, so that's our confidence interval. Um, and again, if you looked at the margin of error, the margin of error was 2.45. So if I were to take, let's see, this 25%, if I were to take 25%, and I were to add our margin of error, which is 2.45, you could see that I'm going to get this 27.45. That's the upper end, right? That's the upper end of our confidence interval. If I take 25% and I subtract 2.45, okay, so if I subtract these, I get the lower end. I get the lower end. And you can see that's the relationship between margin of error and confidence interval. They, they walk together on the same path. Okay, this has been MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos, and I want to make sure that you go back to MathGuide, check out our text-based lessons, our interactive quizzes, and, of course, our instructional videos. Take care.